Well, good day. It is the, <clears throat> the 12th already of May, 2021. And I'm going to do one uh, today on the morale and the customs and border protection. And before I begin now, uh, a little bit, just uh, digress a little bit. Um, I entered the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old. And uh, I will tell you this, when I arrived at boot camp, it was not what I expected. It wasn't remotely what I expected. And I don't think it was remotely what a lot of the recruits expected. And as a result of this, uh, there were a few who actually had to be separated for various reasons. But we had a lot of people drop within the first week or two, um, just get discharged. Essentially, they just quit, okay, for all intents and purposes. Now, why would they quit? Um, again, um, the service had not really been accurately represented to them. And I can say this later on in my Marine Corps career also. You know, it was not what I expected. <clears throat> it wasn't remotely what I expected. Uh, it was, there was a huge difference between the sales and the actual uh, experience. Okay, now I'm happy I did it. I'm happy I did it. Um, fast forward a few years to when I joined the DEA. These are people who should know better. These are grown men who are law enforcement officers, but they're sworn in. They sent us to Quantico. Within a few weeks, a good number of them resigned. So again, the DEA was not what they expected. The academy was not what they expected, not remotely. Now, why is this a problem? It's a problem, number one, for them because they quit and they disrupted their lives. Number two, it's a problem because they took jobs from people who would have done well in the academy and made a career out of the DEA. Number three, it's a, it's a waste of taxpayer dollars, okay? So the purpose of what I'm doing on this and I don't know, you know, whether I'm being successful or not. I pray that I am. But if I'm not, you know, you guys will let me know. It's not to be a recruiting um, adjunct for the agencies. In other words, my job is not to persuade you to join one agency or another. Um, I'm trying to get the best information that I can regarding what you will experience. And I think it's important that you, you have this before you apply or certainly before you take the job, okay? Because once you take the job, you find out it's not what you want, um, you know, you're gonna be disappointed. Now, of course, there's disappointments with everything in life, but, um, you know, why not find out what you're gonna do beforehand? Now, yesterday I had done one on uh, ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and one of the things I, I alluded to, you know, they're detention officers, and, um, there was, uh, I put on a clip about a demonstration that was held in front of the uh, home of one of the wardens of the detention centers. And again, we have the worst ruling class in the world in this country, as far as I'm concerned, I agree with TV show host Tucker Carlson in that regard. But I mean, they had to call out the police. Now the police and the ICE, you know, they get along, cops get along, you know? Chicago police, DEA, immigration custom we get along who doesn't get along politicians and agency bosses why because they're political and they they seek to further their careers okay and uh, what our political elites have done is turn us against each other and one thing that is amazing I mean one of the uh, viewers of my uh, video yesterday kind of commented I don't know what I'm talking about with regards to detention officers at ICE I've never been a detention officer at ICE. I've never aspired to be in a, a detention officer at ICE. Uh, but I did put that clip on for a reason. And I, I'm going to attach a, um, a letter that was written by the, they call them now the enforcement or removal officers at ICE. It was written to the American people in 2019. Now, why would people who have a job essentially picking up uh, criminal aliens in jails or picking them up at, on, uh, you know, uh, from police departments and deporting them, why would they have to write a letter? Why would those who work in the detention centers have to write a letter? Because the, the amount of negative publicity that had been ginned up by politicians um, and the media um, to discredit a sitting president 
was so great that they were being hit with it. Now this, this is something I have never heard of in my life. Agents writing a letter to the American people trying to explain what they do. Uh, there's a lot of manipulation going on in this country. So if you take these jobs, my point is not that it's not good to become a detention officer with ICE. You misunderstand completely. Okay? I want you to understand that if you take it, you know, um, you know, like everything in life, you know, there's there's good and bad, and the way this country works right now, um, it's like becoming a police officer in a in a major city. There's a lot of bad, you know, to it. There's a lot of bad. Now, when I joined the military back in the '70s, it was a lot of bad joining the military. Why would anyone want to join the military? You have to be crazy to join the military today. You know, we're so divorced from the military as a culture that a lot of people, you know, have an unrealistic unrealistically high expectation of the military. Um, so today what we're going to do is look at the Customs and Border Protection and I'm going to review the, I've already done a video on them, uh, but what we're going to do is review the, uh, the Federal Employee Review Survey and then we're going to look at the results and discuss perhaps why the results are what they are. And the first thing I want to get to before we look at the CBP uh, morale report is just this letter that I alluded to. This is the Enforcement and Remo Removal Officer Letter to the American Public, dated the 12th of September, 2019, Know the Facts. <coughs> and it's entitled, excuse me, A Letter to the American Public. And it says here, across the country, a national debate about current and future immigration policy is growing day by day. They point out that uh, two facilities have been shot at by people and uh, transparency and accurate information, they point out, are necessary to build trust and foster collaboration and, and form the basis for civil discourse and for lawmakers. And then it points out, you know, they don't conduct raids, they conduct targeted arrests uh, some of their legal authority that they do treat detainees or strive to with dignity and, and respect and that they are aware of the real and emotional impact of immigration enforcement. And they point, they close by saying, we know that immigration enforcement is a polarizing, extremely polarizing issue, but we ask the American people to understand that the federal laws we enforce today are the same that have been law for decades. Our mission remains consistent to identify, arrest, and remove aliens who present a danger to national security or who are a risk to public safety, as well as those who enter the country illegally or otherwise undermine the integrity of our immigration laws and border control efforts. We want the American people to know the truth but also to understand how critical cooperation among ICE, local officials, and the community is an indispensable component to promoting public safety and national security. And they also point out our officers do their jobs professionally, humanely, and treat those they encounter with dignity and respect. It is unconscionable when those who have ideological or political beliefs that differ from the law misdirect their attacks on ICE officers who are charged with upholding laws Congress has passed. And to that I say amen. Okay? And now we'll look at the best places to work in the federal government. And I'm sorry to say Customs and Border Protection ranks very low. Uh, their engagement score, which is do they recommend their job as a their place of employment to other people as a place to work? Do they uh, do they enjoy their work? Do they, they feel that their work is appreciated? Um, they get a very low rating, 380 out of 420. It's gone down. This is the 2019 report. I can only imagine what's happening uh, nowadays with um, the new administration. But as you can see with the beginning uh, of CBP in 2005, you know, it kind of has its peaks and valleys but it you know, kind of reached a low point under the Obama administration, started to go up somewhat under President Trump, but I'm sure it's gone down significantly since then. 
So um, again, now one of the weaknesses of this survey is it does not separate CBP from Border Patrol. I would suspect, and I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, I might be wrong, you know? But if I am right, uh, I would suspect that um, CBP officers who work at the border and uh, or ports of entry have a very different uh, opinion of their jobs than Border Patrol agents. Okay, so uh, I would think CBP has much higher morale than Border Patrol. I may be wrong, but uh, CBP, it's, you know, it's a totally different thing almost than Border Patrol itself. When we look at the scores by category, um, the only thing that people really seem to be satisfied with is pay. They don't have much confidence in their senior leadership and their supervisors, um, that they have effective leadership or that their you know, efforts will be rewarded and that those deserving will be, receive awards or promotions. They rank the lowest federal law enforcement agency that I can find. I can't find the air marshals because they're thrown in with, with other uh, components of Homeland Security. I would imagine theirs is equally low, but this is pretty low, okay? Now, having said that, you know, that's, um, this is what it is, you know. Um, some agencies are, are, you know, now one good point, we could say that during this last year, uh, which was 2018 to 2019, they're, ratings did go up, but it's still very low, and I'm sure now it has gone down very significantly. So having seen all this, do I recommend the Border Patrol? Yes. Uh, I would love to join it, actually, if I was young enough to do so. I did tr apply once, but, uh, you know, I also enlisted in the Marines, so there you go. You know, maybe I just have a penchant for, um, you know, I don't know, who knows. But uh, I would recommend it. I would join it if I was 23, 24 years old and, uh, you know, and, and they offered me a job. Absolutely, I'd take it. Um, now, you know, would I want to do that job into my 40s? And I want to get off the, the patrol and get behind a desk probably as you get older. Most people do. But uh, I think it's a good job. But a lot of people apparently, including those in it, aren't as enthusiastic about it. You know, again, in anything in life, when you go into something, you go in with certain expectations. When I went to the DEA, I had certain expectations, and those were dashed. But, you know, overall, you know, you remain committed to the agency's mission. So uh, hopefully it's been, been somewhat useful. I don't, didn't mean this as a rant, but uh, again, you know, it shows like what I'm trying to do. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, maybe it's not worth doing it at all. But, uh, you know, it, again, if, if some people get at least a, I think, a realistic idea of what their agency does and is like uh, versus the, um, the public uh, perception, you know, which in 1985 was Miami Vice. That's what everyone thought DEA. Well, my, DEA was not Miami Vice. You know, DEA is sitting on a surveillance for days on end you know, waiting for some knucklehead to pick up a truckload of dope. I mean, it's uh, it's totally different. So um, hopefully, you know, it, this has been useful, you know, to, to the extent that I, I'm able to be useful. And uh, I thank God for you all. I thank you for the, the kind remarks that you've made on, on the channel. And um, I, again, I thank God that you're willing to step forward and, uh, and serve in law enforcement and the military. So thank you. Okay, God bless.